You know, August might be real slow right now, but I can't believe it. I managed to come up with a bunch of fascinating stuff for us to discuss once again. Thanks to everyone who joins me every Sunday for these discussions. I have so much fun with them, and I can't believe we have such cool stuff to talk about today. Whew, okay. All right, so hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where it's now clear Hollywood did a very bad job programming August. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I found cool stuff for us to talk about, but I had to work at it. And so, yeah, Hollywood has done a very bad job uh, with theaters, uh, programming for the multiplex. Uh, but that could be a really good thing for Friday's Beast, uh, and making sure it has a strong opening, because it literally has no competition. But here's the catch. It still looks a lot like a streaming movie. I mean... That's how it looks to me, uh, especially because, you know, I think theaters still are not doing a very good job making it fun to go to them. How, what are your experiences like recently? I still feel they're really dirty. I feel, I, don't, I just don't feel they have the fun factor that they used to. And I think not only have, are theater, have theaters not improved, but I feel we're spoiled by how nice it is to watch movies in the comfort of our own homes, where we don't have rude behavior and it's very nice to be there and you have the best snacks you can imagine, right? And they still have shortages in the supply chain and not all the good snacks have even returned to theaters. Uh, I don't know if you've, you're aware of that, but I think that's pretty crazy. I mean, I only know that because I sometimes will get a snack when I'm leaving the theater because I'm still not at a place where I'm willing to eat during the movie. I, I keep my mask on. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, we'll see how Beast does. Uh, universal, it's a universal movie, and we know how quick they are to put their theatrical releases on digital, which doesn't give you, you know, it's another case of not giving you, there's another reason for you not to see Beast in theaters, because you know, if it doesn't do well, that'll just mean it gets to streaming that, I mean, to digital, because, you know, Uni doesn't put stuff on streaming right away. Uh, wait till you see how Elvis is doing. It worked! David Zaslav's probably so happy. Um, I'm sure he is. But anyway, uh, you know, Uni's going to rush Beast to digital, if it, you know, the, the worse it does. So are you planning to see Beast in theaters on Friday? The press screening, uh, they've had a couple of press screenings already. Uh, I'm going on Wednesday, and the review embargo lifts Thursday. Uh, not a great sign, of course, when it's the, right the day before release, but I thought the trailers looked pretty good, and I really like Idris Elba and Charlotte Copley, quite frankly. First is The Lion. I will, I mean, if I wasn't reviewing it, I would still watch that movie at some point, but I think it's a pretty sexy stream, to be honest with you. Uh, but yes, Thursday is the same day that She-Hulk debuts. All the action in August is on streaming with She-Hulk, and it's weekly. She-Hulk, House of the Dragon, and then, of course, The Rings of Power hitting Labor Day weekend, which is kind of still August. It's the end of summer. Uh, and, of course, that same weekend, Labor Day weekend, we'll see if the Spider-Man No Way Home more fun stuff cut really is more fun. And that will, again, also be in theaters on the premium screens. The end, you know, August, except for the first weekend of August, it's typically pretty slow with people getting ready to go back to school and work. Some school starts mid-August. Uh, and it's typically a last hurrah of summer activities and also getting ready for the fall, you know, purchasing a lot of school supplies. You know, I think everyone panics and is like, oh my God, summer's almost over. I haven't had enough fun. And that fun is usually outdoor activities and not seated at home or in a, in a movie theater. Although, of course, Shang-Chi was a huge hit last year, Labor Day weekend, and one would think that Disney would have christened a hot new release date. I mean, I guess Spider-Man No Way Home's re-release is kind of taking advantage of that, and next year, The Equalizer 3 is going to try and do something uh, on Labor Day weekend, but it really hasn't taken off the way one would think. I feel for a real, if, if movie theaters were to get better, I do feel like the right movie could really do well Labor Day weekend. I still feel it's a hot date. But that's enough about the future. Let's talk about today, where 87 North apparently has just one idea. This occurred to me while I was watching Day Shift on Friday. And they're milking that one idea for all it's worth. A lone, older action hero who doesn't follow the rules and works for a shadowy, quirky organization. I mean, that's the setup for John Wick. Nobody, you might recall, Bullet Train, and now Day Shift, which again hit Netflix on Friday. All variations of the same setup, all from the same production company, Chad Stahelski and David Leach's 87 North, founded and run by former stunt people looking to move their way up the Hollywood food chain. 
Hopefully at the next company meeting, somebody raises their hand and says, I think we might be milking our golden goose dry if we're not careful. You know, John Wick 4, of course, is slated for March 24th this coming year. Maybe 87 North should pay for a development executive. I'm just saying, although I liked Kate. I liked Kate. I don't, I, I don't seem to have a lot of company in liking Kate because the audience scores are pretty low, but I thought it was pretty good. Although it's still basically the same setup, except... You know, in this case, it was a younger woman. But it is still, you know, she's still a maverick assassin type character who works for a shadowy organization and doesn't follow the rules. Also, I don't know if you saw Day Shift, but it was so clearly like, hey, let's get all our stunt friends to get friends together and like shoot some stuff in like an empty house that I was a little insulted. I mean, it was watchable. You know, I was also watching it and I was like, I can't believe Jamie Foxx has an Oscar and he's in this movie. However, I think he really elevated the scenes that he was in. I thought that the comedic, you know, like the family, like talking scenes were better than the action scenes. Because you know when you see stunt people, we'll put like a reel up on social media it just looked exactly like that. They didn't even really bother to pay for costumes for anybody. It was like, come as you are, and we'll slap some vampire makeup on you, and we'll have a good time. And I'm like, I'm not having that good a time. All right, so yeah, Bullet Train from the exact same company, and so much like Day Shift, just with a bigger budget, fell in, oh, fell in, it's like the 55% isn't that bad. What makes it bad is that the opening weekend was so weak. So it fell 55% from a, not a great spot to begin with. Now, just a week apart, Bullet Train and DC League of Super Pets find themselves in the same boat, basically tied. Turns out Crypto's gang, by the way, couldn't keep up with Mr. Wolf's because Mr. Wolf almost got to 100 million. But I don't think that Bullet Train or DC Super Pets is going to do that, which is pretty sad for both those movies, considering the talent involved. Like, can they even catch up to where the crawdads sing? Don't, uh, don't underestimate Ms. Reese Witherspoon, thank you very much, who, by the way, just got Mindy Kaling to jumpstart her son's acting career. Don't take your eye off of Reese Witherspoon. She's constantly doing stuff. All right, but wow. Also, look at Top Gun Maverick continue to soar. Wow, you just, you just gotta salute that. That's incredible. Up 2% in its 12th weekend, thanks to a special promotion by Paramount that would give you an exclusive poster that they made for the weekend if you went. I mean, I can't, I mean, I think that that's still incredible. I don't think that poster was responsible for the 2% uptick. I mean, that's just, people looked at what was, people who wanted to go to the movies looked at what was playing and said, I'll just go see Top Gun Maverick again. That really sucks for everything else in theaters. But it's great for Top Gun Maverick. The movie is back in third place. It's 673 domestic. Wow! Which means at this rate, it's definitely going to surpass Infinity War on the all-time domestic chart, likely this coming week. Can it pass Black Panther at 700 million? It would need over 20 million to do so. Uh, you know, I'm assuming it's going to pass Infinity War, and then it would need a little over 20 to get past Black Panther. But it's still pulling in close to 10 million every weekend. Paramount's like, come up with another poster. <laughs> I mean, I think it could work. The real question is when is Top Gun Maverick going to hit digital? Uh, you know, and it's not going to hit a streaming service, it's going to hit digital sales only, where I think it's going to rack up more money. But Amazon briefly listed it as hitting digital August 23rd, but then quickly pulled that date off their site. August 23rd, I don't like that date. I hope they don't go with that. That would give Top Gun Maverick only one more weekend exclusively in theaters. And I still honestly feel that the right time to release it on digital is Labor Day weekend. I feel it in my bones because that would keep the patriotic vibe that has helped this movie so much. Just imagine Memorial Day to 4th of July to Labor Day. I mean, it's the trifecta. What's this August 23rd crap? That's not any special day. That's what I think that they should go with. And that would give the movie two more weekends, by the way, to be exclusively in theaters. Maybe they're waiting not to see when Thor's gonna drop on Disney Plus. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but anyway, uh, also releasing Top Gun Maverick Labor Day weekend on digital would make it seem special, like a real event. Not only because it's the holiday weekend, but it would be putting it up against some pretty cool competition. The Rings of Power on uh, Prime Video, and again, Spider-Man No Way Home's re-release with the extra footage. Uh, we still don't know how much extra footage, but we'll see. Maybe it's just a little bit more fun stuff. And that's taking over premium screens, by the way, so that's why Top Gun Maverick can't have one last hurrah on IMAX. Uh, by the way, they shut down the IMAX at 68th Street for repairs for two weeks, which I also think sucked a lot of the oxygen, because that's like the most successful theater in the country. Uh, and so that really sucks. <laughs> but it has to be repaired sometime, so I guess this is okay. We'll see what Paramount decides to do with Top Gun Maverick, right? Um, what would you do? When would you release it?
All right, elsewhere at the box office, Thor Love and Thunder is at 720 worldwide. It did get a seven in front of it to its credit, but fascinatingly, still no word on when it's hitting Disney+. Plus. It should, go, going by the 45-day rule that Disney has been using, it should hit Disney+, Plus on August 24th. That's a Wednesday. That's Disney+, Plus' its favorite release date, usually. Uh, I mean, they're starting to stray from that a little bit, but still. And Lord knows it could use, uh, the service could use an extra bump because things are pretty slow in August on Disney Plus outside of She-Hulk. And I don't know, by the way, I've seen the first four episodes. I can start, oh, I'm not going to get in trouble. I can start talking about it tomorrow. But I think they could use, let me just say, I think they could use Thor. Uh, maybe they'll announce it this week. Because I think they only announced Lightyear like one or two weeks in advance. And so that would be the case um, with, with uh, Thor Love and Thunder to release it early this coming week. As for the rest of the top 10, it was okay. I mean, at least there's no movie under a million dollars, which has been the case for as long as we can remember since the pandemic. So at least the box office got that going for it, even though this was a horrible weekend, a horrible weekend. But again, that's, that's a silver lining. Uh, A24's Bodies, 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 after a strong limited release last weekend, you might recall, in just six theaters, well, that went semi-wide along with Lionsgate's fall this weekend, and both failed to impress mainstream audiences. So it looks like they're going to have to rely on the kindness of clicks. On that note, note, let's head over to streaming, starting with Nielsen as usual. Resident Evil got off to a legit start. Those numbers are okay. I mean, those numbers are better than okay. Those numbers are like, as I said, legit. But the lack of a season two announcement still, remember Nielsen's about a month behind, Let's see what happens to it over the next few weeks. It must drop off a rock. Stranger Things in the Terminal list are still going, though, continuing to be very strong, at least here. You'll see Stranger Things has lost some momentum when we get over to Netflix's uh, more recent charts. Uh, but the Terminal list is doing very well, emboldening the people accompany, uh, associated with that, including star Chris Pratt, to call anyone who criticizes it woke, right? Um, again, strange tactic. Just be happy your show's doing well. When you want to expand the audience and be like, hey, some of you might not have watched this show, but look how successful it is. Maybe you should give it a whirl, right? Uh, and then one week out, speaking of uh, Prime Video, one week after wrapping up season three, the Boys is still at fourth place. Oh, I'm so happy. That show has arrived. I'm so happy. The Homelander gifts are having a real moment on social media, and I'm still not tired of them just yet. I always love to see them. Season four is about to start filming. They're all converging in Toronto. Oh, boy. I am so glad to see they aren't wasting any time after a forced two-year break between seasons two and three, thanks again to the pandemic. Oh, I'm so excited. I love that show. I'm so glad to see it finally become, I think The Boys has arrived. That is a legit big show. Uh, the Umbrella Academy and Only Murders are doing okay in the middle of the pack, while with its season finale, Ms. Marvel was never able to get above seventh place in the top ten, but at least Kamala Khan finished out her run in the top ten. That was not always the case week to week. As for movies, not too many surprises here. The Sea Beast still going strong. Love that movie. Uh, and, the Disney, and Disney Plus clearly has another Disney Channel hit with their Zombies franchise. You know, we don't want it to be all Marvels and Marvel and Star Wars. We'd love to see Disney diversify its portfolio. Over on Netflix's charts uh, for just, and also theatrical releases. I can't wait to see how Lightyear does in the Nielsen ratings. We'll have an answer in the next few weeks. All right, over on Netflix's charts for, again, just last week, those are, these are a little more recent, Purple Hearts, uh, the audience for this movie grew, and it actually switched places with The Gray Man from last week. Uh, and Tom Holland has two Sony movies in the top 10. That pay one window deal that Netflix signed with Sony is sweet. Now, over on t um, t uh, t for TV, for TV series on Netflix, The Sandman did debut at number one. But it's a weak number one compared to other shows' debut weeks, even for a first season, you know, because it has to have a, build an audience from scratch. Uh, it's still below where Resident Evil debuted. Uh, and First Kill, though, that was, a small, that was even smaller. First Kill was smaller than this, and Netflix recently canceled that. They did not renew that show. Uh, but shows like The Lincoln Lawyer started smaller, but grew substantially uh, week to week thanks to word of mouth. And then you have Heartstopper, which was never a huge viewership juggernaut, but it was a juggernaut on social media. But now I don't see The Sandman being, uh, you know, that's not setting social media ablaze. So it's going to have to rely on expanding its audience week to week. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's also worth noting that Stranger Things 4, as I said, seems to have finally settled down. It's, it's toward the bottom of the top 10 now. And speaking of other season one debuts, Uncoupled, that doesn't look great for a renewal either, but at least it's significantly cheaper to make. It's got that going for it. One of the problems with Sandman getting a renewal 
is just how expensive it is. It's the most expensive Warner Brothers show to date that they've ever produced at 15 million an episode. And again, it's on Netflix. What the heck? Uh, I actually think this maybe would have done better on HBO Max. I think that it fits really well with that audience. But I got to say, these numbers just don't match the amount of money that's being spent on the show. But uh, let's see if it, if it does. I mean, it's I can already see that it's dropped, it's dropped from the number one show on Netflix's own charts that when you log on to this to service. So I don't know how good I feel about a Sandman renewal, to be honest with you. And there are no big stars, I think, to really push a renewal. Uh, maybe if they can bring the budget down. But then who would want to watch that? All right, so then over on iTunes, as I said, it worked. Zazzy must be over the moon. As Elvis, not available on HBO Max, debuted on digital Tuesday and is still number one come Sunday. With the movies that are on simultaneously at no extra cost on a streaming service, they'll typically debut on Tuesday at number one on digital, but then drop by the end of the week because people are watching it on the, at the, on the streaming service. Uni, by the way, who Warner Brothers Discovery is trying to duplicate, still has half the top 10 sewed up with this strategy. And look, Charlotte Copley and Ted K, uh, basically a digital release, is in the top 10, right? Seems to be getting solid reviews, just as he gets ready to return to theaters with Beast. That's right, it's the last big new movie of the summer with Universal's Beast hitting theaters on Friday. Idris Elba stars with an assist from Copley. Also, a new Dragon Ball movie is coming out in limited release and taking a lot of the premium screens away from Beast. Uh, you know, Beast doesn't have them all sewed up. It's gonna have to split them a lot of the time. And in some cases, it has the only premium screen at the multiplex with Dragon Ball. We'll see how Dragon Ball does. Over on streaming, in terms of movies, Paramount Plus has a new movie with a prequel to 2009's Orphan. And Netflix has two, a Lily Reinhardt movie on Wednesday, which is basically a remake of Gwyneth Paltrow's Sliding Doors, and another of those softcore 365 movies on Friday. As for series, on Monday, Hulu takes a crack at the Lakers with the weekly docu-series. Uh, Thursday, She-Hulk drops its first episode on Disney+. Plus. It's confirmed one episode a week. They're not starting with more than one, and they're only about 30 minutes. Each one has an end credit scene, though, which I think is cute. Uh, the dreaded cute. But it's, it is cute. Well, Peacock, this is exciting. Peacock starts a popular UK series, which is a few weeks ahead in the UK. So if you've been watching this in the UK, is it good? The Undeclared War, which, coast, which uh, features, it has a big cast, but two of the biggest names attached are Simon Pegg and Mark Rylance, who I both adore. This is about the government dealing with cyber attacks. Ooh, me likey. On Friday, Netflix has Michelle Monaghan playing twins in the thriller Echoes, while Apple TV has a whole bunch of bad sisters dropping the first two episodes of that new series also on Friday. And Heidi Klum and Tim, Glunt, Tim Gunn decide to make their own Project Runway over on Prime Video, also starting on Friday with two episodes per week. Ooh, sassy. Uh, and that's this week's movie math. What have you been watching? What do you plan to watch? What do you think of how August looks at the box office? And when would you like to see Top Gun Maverick and Thor Love and Thunder hit digital and or streaming? Share those thoughts. I mean, Disney Plus is the only one who is keeping stuff in the 45-day window to a streaming service at no extra cost. Let's see if they continue to do that as they're now, the only, again, the only ones doing so. Hmm, but they do have more subs than everybody else. Fascinating. All right, share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.